question comes from one of my High Time sisters in my Miss High Times group. Her name's Bridget. She's from Fresno, California. She would like to know more about the endocannabinoid system, so basically what it is and how it works. Okay, so the it's called the Human Endocannabinoid System, and it was discovered in the 90s. And in terms of a breakthrough discovery to move you know, the acceptance of this medicine forward, it, that's really what it's all about. Now, when, as an activist movement, we make claims about the healing properties of this plant, we often sound like a bunch of dumbasses. And the reason is because it sounds just way too good to be true that one plant could treat cancer, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, all these different diseases, until you understand that the, there's an internal communication system within every mammal, including ourselves, that just happens to use the same chemicals that are found in the plant, and those are called cannabinoids. Now, when they're just growing in the plant, we call them cannabinoids. When they're found in the brain, we call them endocannabinoids. And there, there's CB1 receptors that are primarily in the brain and CB2 receptors, which are found in all our internal organs. And they talk to each other, and they talk to each other using cannabinoids as signals. And it, it, once you understand that concept, it, it, things start to make intuitive sense. It's not that we're saying that somebody came along and sprinkled magical fairy dust on the plant. We're saying that there's a real communication system within the body, and it's how the body is supposed to work. And for instance, with cancer, it's, it sounds crazy to say that cannabis can cure cancer, even though there's now thousands of people that are living proof that, you know, they were sent home to die and they took enough ca cannabis and they beat their cancer. And if you understand that a cancer is a tumor, just it's, it's our body cells growing out of control and they're failing to receive the signal to die. And that signal is supposed to come in the form of an endocannabinoid. And if they don't have enough of those endocannabinoids, their body fails to receive that signal and the cells don't know to die. And all that needs to happen is for those cells to be exposed to cannabinoids and they know to die. Now, one of the challenges when in targeting cancer is, is specifying exactly where you want the cells to die. Because again, this isn't some foreign thing. It's your own body making cell clusters. Now, once you understand that those tumors have endocannabinoid receptors on them, it makes sense. Suddenly it's like, well, of course it's going to work that way. If the body is trying to send a signal to a group of cells to die, it needs a target. And that target is a CB2 receptor. Also with epilepsy. Now, epilepsy is poorly understood. It can come in a lot of different forms. It can be from a brain malformation. It can be from a head injury. There's chemical exposures that can cause it. We don't really understand what, what's going on with seizures, but it's often referred to as like a chemical storm within the brain or like an electrical storm within the brain. And even just knowing that much, if you understand that the brain is using endocannabinoids to communicate, flushing the brain with a, flu, you know, with a big batch of endocannabinoids, or in this case, just regular cannabinoids, it, you know, it quells the storm and it, it just starts to make intuitive sense. So, you know, in terms of raising awareness about the plant, it's not that helpful to just make, you know, grandiose claims that it does this, that, and the other thing. But if you can educate people about the human endocannabinoid system, that, that's really how people will start to take us more seriously. Okay. Is there a difference between an endocannabinoid system of an adult versus that of a child? Okay, so I, I, let me start off by saying I'm not a doctor, and that's really a question for a doctor, but I, I will make an anecdotal observation that I thought I find very interesting. So yes, children have endocannabinoid systems just like adults, and the, in, uh, there's been studies showing that women's breast milk contains endocannabinoids, which is a fascinating discovery. Which is why the kids, when they go off the breast milk, they start to that, have the seizures. That's what's that's a weird observation that I keep hearing is that the the children that are suffering from these you know intractable epilepsies often began having seizures right around the time they went off of breast milk. So it's possible that their internal communi communication system, their endocannabinoid system, is depleted, and they were getting some cannabinoids from their mother. And when they stopped getting them, they didn't have enough for themselves and that, that manifests in seizures. Again, that's totally a hypothesis, yeah. but you know, it's based entirely on anecdotal evidence, but it, it is a recurring observation. Cool, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>